Hey babe, I think I'm gonna sell this candy dish on eBay. How much do you think we can get for it? Oh no, you're not gonna sell that. I got plans for that. Like what? It's perfect for your disgusting Necco wafers. Oh, okay. That'll work. I was in Alachua, Florida here with uh, my daughter a couple weeks ago and we went to a community yard sale in her neighborhood and I bought these two sport ball thingies from a gentleman uh, who sold them to me for two dollars and when I saw them I thought right away these would be a great project uh, for the shop here. Now these sports ball thingies uh, they don't have any finger holes I didn't know what they were I've never seen them before I, I did a Facebook post asking people what they were and I got a lot of opinions on that, but the most common response was that they're duck pin bowling balls. So in this video, I'm gonna focus on the plastic and wooden portion of this compote slash candy dish slash lidded container that I made with the first ball. Uh, there's another video I did about the finial. Uh, this is a metal working project, and I thought it would make this video a little bit too long and really too many topics. So. I had a great time doing this project. I made a huge mess. I cleaned it all up, but at the end of the day, I ended up with something that's kind of unique here, I think. So I hope you enjoy watching this project. I need to center drill a hole in the ball so that I can thread that for a piece of quarter inch all thread. And that's what I'll use as a draw bar to hold this thing in the chuck. Uh, but first I need to drill a hole as close to the center as possible. So I've got the table on my drill press set more or less where it needs to be. And what I'm going to do now is uh, to find the center of this thing, just have a piece of steel bar. What I'll do is uh, put this piece of steel into the chuck of the drill, tighten it down, and then just kind of figure out where this piece of wood needs to be. And that's pretty darn close to the center, you know, for the purposes of what I'm doing. You know, I think it's within a sixteenth of an inch or so. I'll lock the table down here, and so this thing is is ready to go. So I'll just release this, go, and I'll take my steel rod out the bottom. And now, uh, when I set the ball in there, the top of that ball should be very close to the center of the spindle. So I'm just going to take it nice and easy. Now, if this was something else, I would use a centering bit to get it started, uh, but. Uh, yeah, the plastic material is cutting pretty easily here, and it feels like it's the same material throughout so far. Oh, that's great. I have gone all the way past the midpoint of this uh, ball here, and it's all plastic shavings coming out. So I believe this ball is 100% resin. I'll be able to work on this one. Well, as it turns out, <laughs> I drilled my hole a little bit too big, so I ended up uh, having to core it out a little further. So this is a 3816 TPI, but uh, I feel better having the larger thread size, just uh, more strength on the, the engagement there to the, uh, to the headstock. So I'll turn this thing out here and we'll mount our piece of rod and we'll go over to the lathe. And just threading in my all thread here. So what I've got is uh, just a little piece of sapelli, and what I did is I, off camera, I turned a cup in here that kind of approximates the curve of the ball and uh, drilled a 3 8 inch hole, actually a half inch hole through there, all the way through. So my all thread just goes through the hole and I'll bolt it on the back side here. Now to keep this thing from spinning in the cup chuck when I turn this on, I've got a couple pieces of this uh, material here. This is the stuff you put under a rug on a tile floor so that it doesn't slip. So I'll just put those in there and squeeze those in real good. Uh, so that should allow this thing to turn uh, without slipping. And uh, there's my piece of all thread coming through the spindle. It's a nice tight fit there. Uh, and uh, just a couple washers and a lock washer. And I will take this thing and I'll turn it down. Where's my wrench? Here it is. I'll just turn it down until the lock, the lock washer flattens out, and that's as much as I need to, to do. And I guarantee you that's going to be a super nice tight uh, pull for the draw bar. I don't think that ball's going to go anywhere. All right, that's tight, and uh, 
Let's fire it up and see how she does. Out of the line of fire here, and three, two, one. Boy, that looks really good. And it's got almost no run out at all. So this is gonna be a real nice little thing to turn right here. Before I get to turning on this thing, I do want to uh, bring up the uh, live center into this end. So I'm gonna use uh, the centering bit here and I'm gonna find the center on this other side and create a hole there. And uh, then I'll have a place to uh, register my drill. And uh, we're also going to drill uh, the hole here so that I can tap this out for the 3 8 inch 16 all thread. That way I have a, a way to mount both sides of this. And uh, now I can bring up my live center here and I'll have a much safer uh, turning condition here. So looks really good. about a one inch ligament uh, left on this thing. Oh, and it's loose. Cool. Let's take this thing apart and see what we got. Ha! Look at that. Very interesting. Well, I spent a few minutes sanding uh, this piece that I cut off, just enough to see what the cross section is. And it is a solid plastic. And I think this is a urethane. But it also smells uh, like some other plastics I've worked with before. I had to open up the shop. This stuff was really a, a strong smell. So we're going to take it outside and I'm going to do my best to hollow this out using cutting tools instead of uh, scrapers. I tried a number of different tools for hollowing, uh, but ultimately it was my round carbide that carried the day here. Um, you really have to kind of lean into this thing a little bit, and I had to work with it a, a while before I finally figured out the best angle. And it likes to be kind of at a negative rake, and it likes you to push the tool into the work fairly firmly. So this is not a case where you, you just let the tool do the work like with the bowl gouge. You gotta, uh, put some force into this thing to get it to bite and to cut the plastic. I think I've got this thing somewhere around, I would say, three-eighths, a quarter to three-eighths in that range, all the way to the bottom. I left the bottom a little heavy uh, because I want to have that threaded hole to work with to put a foot on it. So uh, the hard work is done. I was flattening off the bottom so that I could put a foot on it. And I kind of got the idea to, uh, to step it. So I'm just using my skew. It makes a pretty nice, uh, like almost like a negative rake scraper. Uh, the plastic really works well with that. So I'm just uh, sort of flattening the bottom so it doesn't look quite so spherical. And just cutting some insects here. Go to sanding here in a minute. I think that'll add a little character to it. Well, you can only get so far with dry sanding this, and so uh, I've got this set up here. You'll notice I've got a couple of boards, and uh, I'm wet sanding. I'm using a sponge. This thing has about a 120 grit, and you can really move some plastic uh, with this sponge and using the wet sanding method here. And uh, I'm going to get this outer side taken care of and do a little more work on the inside here and get it smoothed out here as best I can. And uh, then we'll switch over and do the top. This little micro mesh set and um, this I believe is about a 1400 grit thereabouts. So I'm just rubbing in a little bit of wax here. This will get into all the little nicks and things and help hide them a little bit. And just Oh yeah, that's pretty darn nice. That's good. <laughs> I'm tickled to death with that. Well, somehow I lost the footage of cutting this foot here, but I tried to have it mirror the bottom of the ball, so I put some steps on it. And here I've center drilled and I'm tapping for that uh, 3 8 16 thread per inch piece of all thread that'll attach this to the bottom of the ball.
And now I can uh, flip the piece and mount it on a piece of all thread here, which uh, I'll use a drawbar to hold it. And I had glued on this piece of maple that I used as a tenon, and now I'm just turning that off here very quickly. And then uh, we go to cupping out the bottom so that it'll sit nice and flat on a flat surface. So just using my bowl gouge here to cup it out by about an eighth of an inch. Looks good and a little bit of sanding and we'll be ready to apply our brand. The most rewarding part of any job is putting the finish on and so I'm using boiled linseed oil. I've got a can of it that I've had for no less than 10 years. Stuff just keeps on keeping on. Oh, that's going to be pretty. Well, I've got the pieces parts ready for this thing. I finished the bottom today and uh, I've got a piece of all thread in there. This is a 3 8 16 TPI piece of all thread and it matches the hole that I cut in the bowl. So this will go together very nicely. I'll screw this into the bottom and that's a nice firm connection there. Now I used a little piece of wood in there to block the hole so that's nice and flush with the bottom and uh, for the top I've got another little piece of wood that also uh, hides that hole as well. So now for a finial, uh, I, I made this thing from a fireplace tool handle that I had on hand. And that's a separate video. So look for a link to that one in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll take a minute and uh, leave a comment and tell me what you thought about this project. Have a great day. <music>